Well, that was an unfortunate turn of events. So I thought, hey, screw it. What if now's just not the right time to talk about the stuff that I want to talk about? I know there were a lot of random statements and questions that popped up in there very briefly in the one minute that I was online, if it was even a minute. Uh, so instead, I think I'm just going to show you what's been going on. Uh, I've been making a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is going to be a very casual magician's video, I suppose. This is my rod from the Trithemian method. Very classic wood burning. I'm quite a fan of it. And I've been reading the Hermetica, if we can see that. And of course, uh, a later discussion I'll be giving on is on the magic book. Uh, this comes specifically, the particular style and methodology behind it comes from Lieber Abba. Uh, in many ways, it's like a personal grimoire or a journal. Uh, I'll show you some of the things that I've been throwing at it artistically. won't really let you read it, but... Uh, uh, very traditional, kind of classic piece, full of fun little calligraphies and things like that. If I can get it. Yeah, full of fun little calligraphies and such. And then I started writing with the calligraphy pen itself, which turned out quite nice. Just what I've been up to lately. Uh, if anyone's wondering, the hiatus was mostly a magical one where I was educating myself. I've been engaging with the, uh, the spheres a lot lately, and I've been doing that for a couple of months now. And uh, I have a table of practice for my Trithemian method, which I'd love to show you, but it is currently, well, right over there in the office, but I don't want to move my camera because getting it centered like this is actually quite a pain. And my table of the art. For those who follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen all these little doodads and knickknacks that I've been making. Uh, the particular tables for the particular practices that I've been engaging with. Uh, the Trithemian method I've been using basically for the seven spheres for celestial magical practices. And, uh, you know, the charges that come there and the experience and stuff like that. Because that's been a big part lately of uh, my alignments, so to say. I've been interested in the more ceremonial stuff. I've gone back to my roots in many ways. Uh, and also thinking and discussing Kabbalah. Well, anyway, if you did have a question that didn't get addressed and you want to address it, uh, throw it in the comments. I'll get back to you as I can. Uh, if maybe some of you are probably curious about my magical experiences as of late after I've been getting way back into ceremonial stuff. Uh, never left a Nokian for those who were curious. No, I didn't leave it behind. I just ended up getting so personal with it that it became complicated to ever do a discussion on it. It became difficult to ever really uh, express exactly what it is that I was experiencing. Because my Nokian experiences, my scrying of the Aethers... Uh, has surprisingly been different than that that I've anticipated from other people who I've talked to about who have scried the Aethers. Fortunately, some people uh, associated with particular magical bodies have been able to give me a lot of assistance in decoding some of the things that I've dealt with, and uh, it's been quite a fun run. Other than that, I still want to give the talk. I still want to do the talk about Asiya and the purpose of life in Kabla. So there's a theological component to this that we have to accept. The theological component to the purpose of life in Kabbalah is really the rectification, the tikkun, right? Uh, tikkun ha'alam, the rectification of the world, is essentially the goal, right? Now, is that the purpose? Is the goal and the purpose one and the same? Not necessarily. Now, the purpose of the individual is the pursuit of this particular tikkun, this rectification in the world, and the means by which we get there is debated between every single religion, right? Uh, to the Buddhist, the self-nullification might be the tikkun of the whole world. It's just one's personal self-nullification. Uh, in Christianity, it seems to be more of the the return of Jesus, right? And in Judaism, tikkun ha'alam is a, a certain circumstance and state of being where the world is rectified and made proper, uh, which is a point in which the divine dwells here physically in a more intimate manner than in the way that we experience reality. So the individual purpose fluctuates based on which way we do it. So in Kabbalah specifically, and this is going to be standard Kabbalah, for those of you who are part of, uh, let's say, like the Shabbatean styles and things like that, obviously there is argument in these areas, and, and a very solid one at that, a very complicated one. I was actually watching a really cool debate recently uh, between a Shabbatean and an Orthodox Jew on uh, the the subjects surrounding this particular thing. Uh, so let's talk 
a little bit about just the classic Kabbalistic perception is that by the performance of mitzvahs, the world is rectified and made more proper, therefore elevating everything. Uh, also, the the gathering up the divine sparks, right? That's the mystical understanding of this particular matter, is that the particular essences of divinity that are latent within the world are gathered up. And what does that really mean? That is, in and of itself, a complicated question. Uh, whenever the idea of the divine sparks being present in the world to gather them up means to bring them into rectification themselves right so uh in so let's say there's a divine spark inside an animal okay uh and it is eaten under the proper mitzvahs and regulations and torah regulation and all that because again this is the theological basis behind it it is then brought into the individual and lifted up through them literally uh, which is similar to the story of Abihu and Nadab, but I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, but of their uh, their bellowing and their consumption by the path of the consuming fire, uh, which I've talked about before, I believe in uh, in a live stream way back, way way back, uh, probably last year, maybe two years ago now. I'll have to find it. I'll, I'll leave a link if anyone's curious about it. I believe it's called uh, Trial by Fire or Baptism by Fire or something like that. It was a, it was an interesting discussion, but uh, essentially the the individual purpose is at least in the Kabbalistic theological sense that end that goal that this rectification of the world through the gathering of the divine sparks, which is done through the performance of mitzvahs. So uh, I guess that's a very quick summary. Normally now we'd open it up and we'd, there'd be questions and stuff like that, but my internet's just not doing what it's supposed to do. So um, I've shown you my stuff kind of giving people updates on where I'm at, just the usual, and we did our little piece. I feel comfortable now. I feel good. Uh, if you want to hook me up, let's chat. All right. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you next time.